there. Perfect. Hi, I'm Gloria Hockerinen, and I feel really privileged to stand with you here today at probably one of the most exciting turning points in the history of medicine. And battling obesity, which is one of our huh, biggest thorns in our sides, has made healthcare providers wary. It's very difficult to obtain and achieve, and it's become truly a war of epidemic proportions. Just look at some of these latest uh, sobering statistics worldwide, and it confirms what most of us already see every day, a whopping, ever-burgeoning control of overweight, obese, and unhealthy Americans. And no child is left behind either. You know, we have never seen a disease cripple our children so quickly and so effectively. It's going on all across the globe, not just here in the United States. Back in 2000, I attended a Harvard Obesity Summit with the famous bariatrician George Blackburn, and he mentioned and predicted that this crisis was going to occur. But what he got wrong was the time frame. It's happening even faster than what he thought. Here's a picture of one of my weight loss patients, Ross, and I'd like to go over his story as a case history to interest you in becoming an anti-aging obesity expert. And here are some children that we see in the center. You can see the trends around the United States back in 1990. Everything was blue and white. And just very quickly, and by 2007, and this data now is two years old, you can't even find anything that's blue except one state. And who knows if it's still blue anymore. You can see around the globe, you know, the US, yeah, we're still number one. Woohoo in obesity. So how can anti-aging physicians affect weight loss for patients? What do we have in common or that's different from a commercial weight loss center? And I would make the argument that, you know, anti-aging physicians, we're smarter, we're better, you know. We stand at a really unique place where we can not only treat, but we can eradicate obesity. We can do it in a way that most of our conventionally trained colleagues are not aware of and we're brave enough to do so. Also, our patients, once they start to lose weight, they're already used to a self-pay venue in our office. They become a really loyal patient, and you get this great patient base that wants to go on and do anti-aging, regenerative, proteogenomic, metabolic medicine. So here's Ross. He was sent to me by a colleague of mine who is a breast surgeon. This is his nephew, and you can see, I mean, he's super crazy obese. He's walking around with, you know, metabolic syndrome out of control, almost diabetic. His lipids are off. I mean, anything you can imagine. His testosterone is low. His growth hormone is low. His estradiol is high, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Cortisol up. So I start what I call is an intense, targeted approach to help him. We correct hormones. We look at nutritional imbalance. We get professional fitness counseling, intense psychobehavioral therapy. And this is what we see four months later, and it looks pretty good, right? But how about this? Nine months later, it looks like a total transformation has occurred. Doesn't that look great? And I didn't staple a stomach, you know, though as a surgeon I do bypass of the bowel, for example, because I'm an OBGYN, of cancer. And you can see the malabsorption and the side effects that can occur. But we're not done, because what I did is I tweaked them biochemically a little bit more. I used intravenous vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, and this is what you see. A satisfied patient for life. So what happened to him? Because this occurred in 2005. This was a nine-month transformation. He's now in medical school. He's about to finish. And he's too smart to go to MD school. He goes, now nah, I'm going to become a chiropractic physician. So it's all biochemistry, and so let's review that. You know, Dr. Roger Williams coined this term, biochemical individuality, and our respect for it is key to optimizing patient success, and no matter what the field is that we're doing. When I went to a recent lymphoma and leukemia ball, they sent me a flyer about where my money went and what type of avant-garde research they're doing. This is the best of conventional medical research. And what are they doing? They're trying to find out if a standard chemotherapy is going to be toxic for somebody, if they're going to be a non-responder or responder. It's called predetermination testing. And we can apply this approach to our weight loss patients. 
And I borrowed this slide from a great mentor of mine, Dr. Patrick Hannaway, who does extensive lectures on nutrition. Here, for example, is the hypothalamic center which controls hunger and satiety. Well, look at that. The same center that controls our hormones. That's interesting. And we know that it's an opposing balance between two forces, orexigenic, which makes you hungry, and anorexigenic, which makes you full. And we want to find a novel pathway in the patient which is safe and turn on that anorexigenic path. So you can see the list of anorexigens has become extensive. It's getting longer every day. Orexigens also exist, and drug companies are looking for novel ways to stimulate or inhibit one system or the other. These pathways are very interrelated, and it's the cumulative effect and turning on and turning off of these switches that ultimately leads to the patient's behavior. But let's look, too, at hormonal correction. Because what I'd like to put forth to you, which a lot of my bariatric colleagues, and I'm boarded in both fields, bariatrics and anti-aging medicine, what they don't look at is the hormones of the patient. But if we even think about it for just a minute, it's intimately related. Testosterone helps us preserve lean body mass and build and burn off fat. It helps burn brown adipose tissue and help uncoupling protein. Growth hormone does the same. Subclinical hypothyroidism, of course, manifests itself this way, et cetera, et cetera. It's very integral to look at your patient's hormones. Here's a sample for male sex steroid hormones. Here's an example for females. And of course, we're more complicated. We have that menstrual cycle. So we have to respect it and do day three labs, day 21 labs, et cetera. Our infertility colleagues are way ahead of us in this field. Here's a sample of estrogen metabolite testing. So when I correct these hormones with patients, my female patients also receive estrogen metabolite for breast cancer risk. And they love the fact that they are really doing something to reduce breast cancer as they lose weight and they can see it on testing. And just a little plug for Dr. Daniel Rudman's study on growth hormone where he did a randomized trial at UNC. And what he showed was patients who had sham injections versus patients with growth hormone in a comprehensive program not only did better with their weight loss and with reduction of body fat, because that's where it at, not just the BMI, but they preferentially lost abdominal fat. That's really making a disease difference.